talk about managing vendor payments. Before showing the payment process, I'd like to show you some of the related payment setup information. In the Accounts Payable Setup area, I'll go ahead and I'll open the Payment area. Here you can set up things such as your payment terms and your cash discount information. You can also set up payment schedules, which can be, you can use um, to schedule installment payments to your vendors. Let's open up the Methods of Payment form. You can assign a default method of payment to each vendor, and this method of payment appears on the invoice lines for the vendor, but you can change that method of payment before the invoice is posted or during the payment process. Here you can specify the file formats that will be used for your payment and payment control information, such as whether a check number is mandatory during the payment process. Let's close this form. Let's move into the payment process now. First we'll look at the transactions that exist for vendor 1002. So I'll go to our vendor list and I'm going to restrict this to vendor 1002 wind televisions. All right, we'll go ahead and click on Transactions. And you can see that this vendor has a number of outstanding invoices that are payable at this point. There are two ways to manage vendor payments through the payment journal. So let's take a look at that payment journal for that vendor that we just looked at. I'll go back to our area page. And we'll go to the Journals, Payments, Payment Journal. And we'll create a new one. Create the new button, select an existing journal, and we'll go into the lines information. There's two ways to create that um, journal. One is by manually settling the invoices, and the other way is through the Create Payment Proposal form. So let's take a look at that manual method first. We'll enter the vendor number for Wind Televisions, and then I'm going to go ahead and choose the Functions Settlement action. Notice that all of the invoices are listed here. So let's assume that we want to pay this last invoice in the list. So I'll go ahead and mark that invoice. Now you can partially pay invoices by changing this amount to settle. So I could decrease that if I wanted to. And notice that my cash discount has expired because my discount is showing as zero right now. We do have some options though. We can manually override the discount with this used cash discount field. Let me go ahead and click in that. And you'll see that there are some options in here. Normal means that it will simply take the defaulting um, discount met method from the accounts payable parameters area. Always means that you're going to override the discount and take the discount even if you're outside the discount period. Never means that you're not going to take that discount. In this case, um, let's say always on here. Notice how the uh, settlement field is decreased in this case. I'll accept this settlement and we'll go ahead and close the form. This will bring the payment information back to the payment journal and the line is created for the amount that I had indicated on that settlements form. Now you can also perform these same functions in the create payment proposal form. Let's go ahead and delete this payment and I'll show you how this same process works if you were using that create payment proposal. This process will use the parameters from this form to generate a list of suggested payments for you to create your payments. For instance, you can create the payment proposal based on due dates or your cash discount dates or a combination of both. You can restrict the payment proposal using the date limiters throughout the rest of the field and you can use the select query to further restrict the process. I'll go ahead and we'll select the select button and we're going to restrict this process by vendor 1002. So you simply would enter in vendor 1002 and click OK. And then we'll go ahead and click OK to generate the payment proposal for me. So on this form I can edit the information or delete the payments if I don't want to process them now. At the top of the form, you're seeing the invoices that make up the suggested payments. And at the bottom of the form, that shows the proposed, pay proposed payments. So in this case, you can see that I have a number of payments listed below. And as I 
scroll and move focus through these, notice that the top of the form changes because I'm paying off different invoices. The system will automatically take any available discounts and you can select the balance control option at the top of the form to see the impact that the proposed payments would have on the balance of the impacted account. Now in this case you can see that the bank account that I'm using, which is my US operating expense account, will be decreased once I process these payments. You can see the before journal and then there's also a column that indicates the after journal balance if I were to process these. Now once you're happy with that proposed payment, you can transfer the information into the payment journal. We'll go ahead and do that. And we'll be back to the payment journal line and you can process that payment according to the prescribed method of payment. In this case my method of payment is checks, so I would, then my, my next step would be to generate the checks for this. Now another part of payment management is currency revaluation. At the point in time when you create an invoice in Dynamics AX 2012, there's a currency associated with that invoice. However, the currency rates change over a period of time and you may want to perform currency revaluations. When you run a currency revaluation, that revaluation will create unrealized gains and losses on the invoice. Let's just go ahead and I'll show you where that form is located. It's under periodic foreign currency revaluation. And at the time when you make payments against those invoices and you actually settle the payment against the invoices, any unrealized exchange adjustments that had previously be been made will be converted to realized exchange adjustments. So let's just take a look at this form. Um, to run this, you would simply provide inputs into the parameters that you're given here and you could run it again using the select query you could run it just for specific vendors if you wanted to or vendor transactions if there were certain transactions that you wanted to revalue and that process would go ahead and run for you. That's all we have today for vendor payments. Thank you for your attention.